Hey, thank you. Welcome to Extract Talks podcast. And by the way, we got a winner. Yeah. Another winner from Barstow, California, David Floyd. All right. He took the hemp strain survey. By the way, the hemp strain survey is still rocking. So answer, what is your favorite hemp strain and why? That would be good. And um, we, you can go on any of our social media uh, outlets. On um, our website, too. Uh, and our website. Banners. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we have. Do that. Uh, yep. um, CBG seeds are what are going out. And David's getting CBG seeds so he can grow his own. Great. Awesome. Great. He's getting a swag bag with shirt and other goodies. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Welcome. Um, and if you're here, go ahead and enable your pop-up so you can see the chat bot. The chat bot is where we have our whole team ready to answer your right. questions. Um, we have uh, the, bat, the bot is awesome. So on our the website. Awesome. Yesterday I stumped it though. Did you, you did. See that? I saw that. I was like, woo. <laughs> <laughs> stumped the bot. I was like, wow, I've never seen this before. Yeah. <laughs> He stumped did. the bot. He had to take a picture. Actually, he took a video of that and sent it to me. I stumped yeah. the bot. And that, for a scientist, is like... It's the, pretty awesome. That's the golden it, ring. It, it's actually a <laughs> failure because we should tell it what to tell the people in the event. I that, know. So it shouldn't be stumped. So. I know, but, but I it, stumped it. But you loved it. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> he does. Was he, good. Does, he does like it. So enable your pop-up so you can engage. Um, and, and we love that. If the, free, if the screen gets frozen, <laughs> go ahead and just click the red and it'll repopulate where you are. You don't have to get out and get back in. It's immediate. Uh, there, there may be poll questions today, depending on how we go through this, because today we're doing the Hemp Business Boot Camp. Business Boot Camp. And so we're going to go through each pro of the processes uh, for you, whether you're a startup, whether you're a farmer thinking about doing this, whether you're an investor looking at this, we're going to go through the whole process of processing. Yeah. Hemp. Yeah. We're, so this is the hemp processing. Yeah, we're going to be emphasize. Yeah, and so we're going to emphasize all of the items you know related to business. Yep. You know, and uh, and how to save costs and how to increase your revenue and how to increase your profit at each step. Yeah. That's what we're really going to touch on. Um, so that that that's where explore all of our resources. They're available live tour, CBD jam sessions, ex advanced extraction guides, distillation guides. Our calculators are you guys are using the calculators, and if there is a calculator you want us to expand on. Let us know. Right. Put that in the chat. Uh, one other thing. Team. One other thing that we have uh, that would be a good resource for you guys is our hemp assessment startup assessment calculator, um, which is basically uh, it's a scoring thing. So what it does is it brings you through uh, a bunch of questions and then it kind of gives you a score at the end of it. Oh. And it's kind of nice. Um, you, you know, it just gets you thinking about different aspects of your business plan. So um, it's on our website on one of the sidebars. It's a hemp hemp startup quiz is what it is and it, we'll just keep it open and see what happens i mean we've already had a whole bunch of respondents to it so yeah wow yeah. hemp they, that's going to be cool hemp startup quiz go yeah and then let us know what you think of that and how you scored share that that would be great thank you and we've got mini courses coming yeah we we have been working on mini courses like crazy so we have um i you know i'm looking at it and like okay this is way more than you'd get from you know, basically a year worth of college. I mean, in yeah. terms of the courses and the course content. So um, it's almost like uh, it's a, it'll be like almost like a mini masters in, in um, you know, in hemp processing. We have business topics. We have, uh, <clears throat> we have business topics. We have processing topics. We have, um, you know, formulation topics. We have uh, all about CBD topics. It's 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 uh, just a tremendous amount of stuff. So we're going to be rolling those guys out, and you guys can sign up for those and take them. You know, at your own pace. Yep. And there and there we will, will be quizzes, of course. There will be quizzes. Yeah. Pay attention. Yeah. And you know, we're talking about really expanding this as well because people have been asking us, "How do I get certified? How do I get a job in processing and extraction and all that?" And so we're we're looking at this over overview as a way to train you and or your employees and we'll have uh, we're looking we're talking about doing some certifications on each step in the process yes that's right i mean yeah so in 
in that instance, you should be, uh, you could be certified, for example, in the business investment aspects of this, or you could be certified in the extraction aspects of it. But so anyway, yeah. you, you'll be able to really kind of curate your own curriculum. Exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll look out for that. Thank you for being here. This is awesome. So let's jump in. Today, we're going to be going through each of the processes, um, it, all the way through the advanced bioprocessing workflow. Yeah, And um, I'll be interrupting regularly to talk about the business component of each element uh, that we want to that we want to touch on. But we're going to be hitting testing HPLC. We're going to talk about wipe film, short film, uh, rotor, rotary evaporators and why or why not thin film, falling film, vacuum filtration, winterization process. Um, denatured elk ethanol versus food grade or organic ethanol and when to use them and when not to use them. Uh, supercritical CO2 yep. and subcritical, those are available as well. Hemp yep. extraction, hemp terpenes, decarboxylation, CBD, um, de- also known as decarb. Yeah activation decarb activation of all of your, that. of your plant material and um batch records and the manufacturing execution system that you're going to need all the way through you know in good manufacturing processes and quality management systems and yeah, from full qc so yeah. excellent so let's jump in uh i think we've got a, you've got a lot i love this presentation that you put together yeah um and i'm looking forward to jumping in yeah so let's kind of do a thirty thousand foot view uh, oh. And uh, we'll just kind of look at, you know, a lot of, I don't think um, anybody who has uh, attended our previous podcast or if this is your first time, uh, people just don't get tired of talking about the overall, they don't, you know, the overall process. Um, we get questions from people who are, you know, well advanced uh, and, you know, on, on the process because there are different ways of doing things. So let's just kind of go right to the 30,000 foot view. We'll take a look at the forest here. So you got some raw material, you, you are getting that uh, all prepared, of course. Yep. And you can see that I start with raw material, but it, uh, the last several podcasts, you can go and look at, we've been talking about how to, how to prepare that, how to shuck and bucket, how yep. to, how to really process that, how to, how to harvest it properly and all that. Um, you go into a receiving station uh, once you have that raw material, and that receiving station is, is the basis for your quality management system. Yep. It's the very basis for your manufacturing execution system. And it also is the basis for your laboratory information management system. Absolutely. Three key business, uh, business pieces or softwares or processes, all three of those things are embodied in that. Um, to really help you get started. So that's really what the IGW lab is, and that's what that receiving station is. Then you go on to the plant, plant processing. Oftentimes, a processor will, will post-process raw material. Mm-hmm. Um, so if the farmer is you know, giving uh, the processor buds or if they're giving them you know, just you know, plant or chop material, you have a plant processing uh, that's happening there, you're chopping it up, you're grinding it up, uh, maybe you're taking a lot of the sticks and stems out of it, in sure. case, you know, things Just like in that. Case. So uh, then you're doing lab testing and really that's, that is a part rocks, of the bullets. Yeah. <laughs> rocks, bullets, uh, any other, Shell casing. but I think that they say it's a foreign matter and debris. Yes. <laughs> all of that stuff. <laughs> so it's the foreign matter and debris. What is that? Anyway? Yeah, we, and we've seen it. Uh, and, and just so you know, I'm going to interrupt here from a business perspective, this receiving and raw material is vital. As we all know, as you're doing a startup, those of you who are in entrepreneurship or investment, time kills deals. And the best thing that you need to have is make sure that you've got all the paperwork coming in. So when you're receiving material, make sure you've got that certificate of analysis, the COA, you've got the, uh, the grow license. Yep. Uh, from the farmer, and you've got the certificate of commerce. Those are the three things you need before you can start doing any processing. Correct. Okay. And then you want to retest when it comes in because mm-hmm. you you're verifying. It's trust, trust but, but verify. verify. That's oh, yeah. exactly that's right. what we got. Okay. So <laughs> okay, but that that is a time kills <laughs> deal. So some of this is a time issue. Make sure you do that in the receiving and the IGW lab is all prevalent throughout the whole workflow. And that has that check mark. So this has to happen. This has to happen. You weigh it, you bring it in everything. Right. We've covered that right. before. Yeah. So um, you weigh it, 
uh, you, it prints out a barcode, you yep. put it out a receipt, the receipt goes in uh, to your QA, QC, and then your lab test. Now, this is where we've talked about lab tests in the past, but usually, I mean, what can slow your whole process down is if you don't receive the lab tests from the, uh, you know, yep. farmer. Okay, um, so oftentimes if you're going to send it out to a third-party lab, you're looking at two to three weeks just to get the pesticides uh, results into you unless you pay an expedite fee right. and things like that. So there's going to be fees associated with your lab testing, or if you bring it in-house, you know, you, you can reduce that amount of time, but you still have a cost associated yeah, with it. Yeah, we that. just almost lost a deal because we had the product ready to go. It was a CBG deal, and we had the product ready to go. We had the potency. Everything was good, but we waited and all of a sudden we found out that the farmer didn't have the pesticide. And okay. we, we, I was like, oh my gosh. So we ended up losing a week on that deal mm-hmm. because we had to go out and get, get the pesticide, pesticide test. test. Right. And then yeah, we're, know, not gonna, follow up. we're not going to add a ground material where we don't have a pesticide test going You don't want to bring that into your yeah. facility without that because yeah, that'll so, contaminate your work. You know, space. what I've always seen is that uh, a lot of people are push, 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 push. Okay. But if you don't do it right, you're going to be, you'll, you will rue the day. Yeah. You will rue the day. Okay, yeah. so you put it into your system. Oh, we'll just wait. And then, then you're halfway through it and, and, and it comes back with uh, abdomectin in it or, you know, yeah. forget about it. You yeah. just don't That's do gonna it. That's going to cost you even touch way, it. more you way more than waiting or even losing that deal. Yeah, exactly. So go ahead. <clears> so then you got the focus. grinding station. Obviously, you got to grind it up. Usually, you, you grind it up into some sort of uh, small I always want to play disco music when we say <laughs> the grinding station. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> like grinding disco. I, I don't know if that really happens. Okay, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't. But. Okay. Uh, then you got the grinding station. You got the ground material. Then that comes out of that. Um, and then um, there's this optional decarboxylation, which takes place, which also is basically your terpene recovery station. That's yes. where you get all your terpenes out. If you don't want to do that, if you just want to take ground material um, and bring it right to its extra- extraction, you just go ahead and do that. Um, you're just not going to have um, pure terpenes to use in formulations. This is fine. You know, it happens. But, but, but isn't that also, that's when it is actually uh, activated this yeah. the the cannabinoids and things are so the only time yes. you would want to do that is if you're using it in a, a pre-roll or something or uh, no? well no well um no actually when you when you burn the uh, material the ground material yeah. it, it will decarboxylate and it's activated and it goes into your with lungs. a pre-roll right, with a pre-roll okay but if you do it if you're doing the oil there's two basic forms you have the acidic and the base uh, acidic and neutral forms sure. of like cbd or THC or, or any of the other cannabinoids for that matter. And what you're basically doing is you are converting the CBDA or the acidic or the acidic form of the cannabinoid to the neutral form. Mm-hmm. The neutral form then is activated and can be absorbed into the body. Right. Okay, so a lot of research is being done on the acidic forms, but the, the absorption quality is so extremely low. Yeah. So um, there's some things along those lines, and be, there's a lot of research being, okay, well, how can we make that more? Um, you know, more, you know, available. bioavailable, okay, things like that. But the vacuum, uh, vacuum decarboxylation is really the way to activate it. Okay, that activates yeah. the THC and right. the cannabinoids in there, even though it's right. low level with hemp. You know, you want to be right. m- less than point zero three. I know that there are some products out there that use uh, ground material in a capsule. Yeah, oh. and uh, the capsule is is decarboxylated in there, so that when you actually put it into your gut. It's actually bioavailable oh. from from the from the actual plant matter. Oh, so that that's one thing. You Brownie know. in a gel cap. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it kind of defeats the purpose, but uh, okay. Yeah, kind of. I'd rather eat the brownie, but okay. Yeah, uh, so I that's agree. the vacuum vacuum side of it. Um, um, so uh, then you get into the extraction. Okay, well, hold on. One. Yes. With the terpenes, there is a full business model just around terpenes. Um, yes, there is. As, and at this level, at when you capture those terpenes at decarb, those are pure um, solvent-free terpenes. Yeah. And they're beautiful. And there's a big market for those. So you can sell those or use those further down the pipe right. in your formulations. Right. So that's money. Money, I think money, that money. The, the, the key thing here is that uh, a lot of the other companies are selling purified terpenes, okay, and they're synthetically derived. Uh, when you have terpenes coming out of this process, there's going to be a whole bunch of terpenes in there. It's going to it's going to look and smell like the ground material. 
And so I think that that's had a lot of value because it's more natural, okay, right. rather than buying it from Exxon. They are sweet. We whatever. call them angel tears. Yeah. They're here's beautiful. A, here, here's a couple of my favorite ones. These are synthetic. Oh. Um, this is a geraniol. Oh. And this is neurodial. You want to smell it? You want to smell it? Yeah. Yeah, here of we go. course. Go ahead. Try it. Try it. <laughs> of course I do. I think, you are know, you kidding me? I think it smelled, this one, that's geraniol. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, that's very nice. Okay, now, th- now smell this one. This is neurodial. Oh, sorry, I, I, I loaded that. Ooh. Neurolidol. Neurolidol. Yeah, neurolidol. Neurolidol. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know, um, they're, they're not very, very prevalent. Very different. They're no. not very prevalent, but they. Um, this has got a nice floral smell to it. It and then, really does. Well, yeah. And, and this one, it, 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 this one strikes me as having a phthalate note. So to me, it almost smells like a new car. It does, kind of. Kind of. Just, just see, because Nero. Yeah, everybody disagrees with me on this. Okay, so maybe they're like, I don't know where you buy. No, your it does cars. have that. It does have that it new car smell. That. Yeah. Well, when you go to the car wash and you say you want the new car scent, that's kind of what that is. Yeah, I bet you they use terpenes. They probably do. Okay, there you go. There you go. We just, we just gave you another. And just so you idea. know, the terpenes from hemp are spectacular. Oh yeah. They are great. They're very chlorophylly and it is the it is the smell that you've come to know and love. Yeah. Um <laughs> okay. yeah, I think that uh, you know some of the terpenes are lost in the ground material or you know it basically while it's sitting there while it's drying. We talked about um our curing and things like that. Um that's something that you need to think about um you know there's really no good way to capture that those those types of terpenes but um, so just suffice it to say that, um, you, you do lose some obviously as you dry out yep. and things like that. So, sure. um, then you go into extraction, obviously, you know, extraction is, uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it. We mm-hmm. talked about different ways. Um, you can extract with uh, supercritical CO2, obviously. I think that's the, the cleanest, uh, lowest cost way to do yes. it versus ethanol, which is higher cost due to operating costs, simply due to the um, loss of ethanol. And that's the business model, is yeah. you want lower cost, lower operating costs overall, forever, right. lower power consumption, smaller footprint, everything. Right, right. right. So, <clears throat> you know, with throughput and everything uh, also considered in there. So one of the things about uh, CO2, if you can scale it, in historically it's always been very difficult to do um, it's been, a, it's been, it's kind of gotten a bad rap because a lot of people were running at very low pressures, for example. And so they, they scratched their heads and said, well, how do I scale this? And yeah. they, they weren't able to figure out that, okay, well, you go up to high pressure, you're using decarboxylated material, you're going, you know, your throughput can be tons a day with a very, you know, with like yeah. three machines, for Absolutely. example, like what we have. So, um, that's just some considerations there. Um, de-waxing and filtration is a optional item. We've been using a lot, uh, um, and, and th- what that is, is that's taking the waxes and the fats out of the extract mm-hmm. and leaving in uh, the cannabinoids and things like that. So a lot of people need to do that if you want to go and distill downstream. Yes. So if you... It, so it's kind of like a pre-process to distillation. And a lot of people want to do distillation either a white film evaporator distillation or they want to do a short path distillation. There's a couple different ways to do it. But in order to do that, you really want to take and, and do a bulk process first where you're taking out all those waxes as much as can be done, and then you go into your distillate. So um, that whole line there from de-waxing uh, you know, to winterization to oil and ethanol solution to evaporation, that whole process is involved with you know, basically taking the waxes out and um and to de-wax that's when you introduce ethanol and we use food grade or organic grade depending on ethanol depending and we never use denatured ethanol in no. that process ever um that's the stuff you put in your gas tank almost right yeah. so you yeah, don't that want that right um and that's why it, because that de-waxes and then the winterization separates it even further so you're removing more of those waxes mm-hmm. uh, so that's the, the 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 money side is making sure you you bring out that bulk process as dr john said and then you need to evaporate out you need to remove all that solvent and that's what the fractron that evaporation does yeah so uh, yeah uh, speaking of that i mean it's just a um you know with the a lot of people say that those other chemicals those other denaturants in there oh that's okay it's no problem at all because it, the distillation takes it out we can't even see it, it that's not actually true hmm. because uh, the the testing uh, that you're using 
for that has such a high detection limit that they're in there, but you're just not seeing them. That's right. Okay, so it's just not quite quite that way. Okay, you're not going to be able to get them all out of there. So residuals are bad. Residuals are there, and yeah. residuals are bad. And um, you know, even if they're under the limit, you may get a pass test. We've kind of gone over this before yeah, in a lot have. of our several of our previous podcasts. But look, uh, if you have two uh, distillate. Uh, samples and one doesn't have has been processed with co2 it doesn't have any of those residuals in it and you have one that has residuals in in it, in it even at a low level which one are you going to choose which one are you going to vape which ones are you going to formulate with well i know which ones i'm going to do yeah. just because i you know i'm kind of a chem chemophobia yeah chemophobia i like it that's what i got all right, <laughs> all right. so de-waxing uh, winterization so how, how this is done is you take the the, wa- the oil that comes out of extraction and you are mixing it up with ethanol, you're freezing it down, and then you're filtering it. And that can actually be done in a very quick, high-throughput way using a couple pieces of equipment, one called the drain droid uh, freezer. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't, you don't usually go through this process in a serial manner. You're doing like a first-in, first-out manufacturing process, yeah. okay? So it's not like you're sitting there waiting for 24 hours for the waxes to fall out, which it doesn't take that long anyway, but... Usually what people do is they let them sit overnight and then they'll, they'll process the stuff that they did yesterday. So there's really no wait time. Yeah. Um, there's, there's, there's really no wait time. Then you need to get all that out of there, all of the ethanol out of there. So then you use some sort of evaporation. Okay. And the evaporation is where you're removing all of the ethanol from the uh, wax and just, you're just leaving what they call winterized crude. Yep. Okay. And there are ways to go about this that are very inefficient. Okay. Um, this yes. process here can be very efficient. If you make it, it can be very high throughput. You can do the equivalent throughput of uh, five tons a day, which like what we do here, um, you can do that in this process here. And it's, and it's very short and truncated. It doesn't yes. have to be long. Even though it looks like there's a lot more steps, yeah. it really speeds up the process. Right. And again, you're, you're, you're investing in that automation and making sure that you're adding profit to the bottom line right. uh, overall, which is very good. Right. Okay. So then you got, uh, once you have evaporation, um, the evaporation that takes place, usually we use call what's called a fractron. Okay. Yes. And uh, the Fractron is an awesome machine. I mean, it really, it really is. Yeah. And most people use rotary evaporators, right? Yeah, right. Um, and you need, I mean, that to do 20 liters, it takes over four hours. Yeah. To do 20 liters. Right. So, and, and it's batch process too. So exactly. once you put the stuff in there, um, yeah, once you put the stuff in there. All right. So evaporation. So we were just talking about that. Okay. Uh, what the road of apps are. Look, you can if you're getting if you have a get started type of mentality and you're you're going you know you're not investing in automation then batch processes are just fine. Yeah. In fact, in fact most of the um, most of the cannabis places they're really not you know investing a lot in automation because they're not doing super high throughput. Right. You know they're doing you know maybe you know maybe a hundred pounds a day of cannabis or yeah. something like that. So you don't really need to have all that. Yeah. Automation. Even the startup, so. if you're starting up initially, mm-hmm. you know, with hemp and you're just doing small batches initially, yeah. that's okay to start out with a road of app, but know that that's going to be your bottleneck right. in your process. Right, right. And you want to move to the Fractron, which will do, you know, 20, at least 20 gallons an hour. Right. That's giant of solvent yeah. removal are you yeah. kidding me yeah and that that specification is really a really like it'll have way way it'll have very very small amount of ethanol in there so if you can if your distillation process can take even more of the ethanol in there you can increase it up to about 40 gallons per hour and so what happens is so, not only are you speeding up the process using f- the fractron you're you're eliminating the workload on the distillation unit and what that does is you don't have to have multiple distillation passes right? And in, and you're going to increase your yield there, which is money in your pocket. Right. So, and that is an integrated solution with the Fractron and the Clear Still, which are great. I mean, it's going to put money in your pocket. That's good stuff. Yeah. Putting the, the, you know, putting the processes together so they're integrated is always a good thing. Um, I think that because you eliminate inventory in between, right? And I think that's that's a that's obviously a big benefit. So, for example, um, from 
from de-waxing all the way through distillation, that can be integrated into one process. Yes. You know, so that, that's not and, a problem. And we can do that. Now, just so you know, even though we talk about this integrated solution, we love that because it does, you do get that economy scale. Yeah. It is, there are advantages. Right, but, but in an ethan, if you are in an ethanol processor now and you have that, you've got a lot of solvent to remove. A lot. And we, ha we are selling the post-processing solutions to many ethanol processors. Right. They don't have our extractor right now, but we're selling these Fractrons and clear stills because it's increasing their capacity and their throughput, even with an ethanol facility. Yeah, so let me, let me tell you a little bit about what the Fractron really is. Yeah. It's, it's actually three falling film evaporators put together, okay? And they're not just... Uh, three. Yeah, three of them, and they're, they're, so we have um, pumps in between each of the fractions, and we can actually slow it down and speed it up. Each one of the fractions has its own independently controlled condenser, so you're, different, you're basically getting out um, three different fractions, or you can put all the fractions together, so it's not like your typical falling film evaporator. In fact, there's nothing like it on the market at the moment. Um, you could think of it like a fractional distillation, like a fractional distillation tower that you might see on a, like at a oil refinery, yeah. only it's horizontal. See, because the, usually with the fractional Where did you possibly get that idea? It couldn't be from your past experiences at all. Could oh, it? no, no, it couldn't have been. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Um, but the evaporation is, is actually quite... Um, it's, it's, it's really great because it's continuous. The a Fractron lot of, just absolutely kicks ass. Yeah, a lot of the people, they'll use the falling film evaporators in a non, in like a non-continuous mode. Yeah. So they'll, they'll, they'll add in 20 liters and then it'll, and then it will circulate again and again and again, and then they stop. And then when they stop, of course, everything kind of cools down. Everything gets plugged up. Yes. Okay. And oh, then you yeah. got to clean it and you're like, okay, is that all, all that stuff in there? No. So. And then, um, you know, that's the big issue. You want to make sure that when you're running, you're yeah. running it constantly flowing through and everything is uh, available to be cleaned. So it's amazing. We, we have a whole bunch of tricks up our sleeve relative to the way we do the falling film. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not just a falling film. It's a, it's a combination of falling film and packed bed. Okay. Sometimes, and some people want to use, um, for example, the third column in a packed bed reactor to actually do the decarb. Ah. So some people who don't start off with a decarb material, they, they they're just it. extracting it, then they want to they want to decarb. So you can incorporate the decarb solution in there at the very end, which oh. is pretty sweet. Oh yeah, that is sweet. Yeah, awesome. Um, and then that can be uh, put right into the white film evaporator. The white film evaporator is what we call the clear still. Um, this particular clear still, we have two versions of that. We have the 400 and the 200 version of that. The 400 version is basically a four liter per minute or four liter per hour, excuse me. Um, it's a two passes in one single system. So again, we're putting, uh, you know, most people have to do two passes at a very minimum. Sometimes yeah. they do three, three. passes. Yeah. So, um, you know, so what would happen in our own operation is that there'd be buildups of inventory between the first pass and the, and the second pass. Always. And then, you know, um, the people who did the work, you know, they, they, it was just because there was bottlenecks, right? Yeah. One would not run as fast as the other. So you, and then you can put the Fractron and Clear Still together. So and that's the bottom And when you do that, there. again, going back to the business model, the Clear Still we have found setting up with competitors. Because we, you know, until we developed the Clear Still, we were using other, you know, distillation methods mm -hmm. and, and equipment. And we stack them up next to each other, and the clear still is running at 20 to 30 percent higher yield than the others. Right. And when you be, and part of that is when we're using the Fractron to pull out most of that, right. Then the clear still can run even that much more efficiently, as can the other equipment. But even after the Fractron, the clear still was still yielding. 20 to 30 percent more product right more full spectrum distillate out of that than the nearest competitor right so one thing to note on that if you guys use our calculators on our calculators page um that's extractlab.com uh, slash calculators you'll see in there that we're showing you yields to distillate okay always okay now now you have to add you have to add um some yield on there 
with the clear still because those are old numbers with old equipment. Yeah, and we're we're still working on those models and making sure, but yeah, add time another, and again we're doing it. But 10%, we percent, yeah, ten percent, something like yeah. that. Just 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 telling you out. I mean, because rule it, of two. Yeah, the rule of two. <laughs> well, in this case, it's ten percent. We just just make sure you add a little bit more because we haven't updated our calculator. We were using um, some other competitive equipment, right. and it was lower yield. Yeah, and then we f- found out uh, with our equipment, wow, we're getting all this yield, so we haven't updated our. But even if you use the models and the calculators we have on hand they're there you're going to be pleasantly good surprised. Rule, good rule of thumb and you're going to have more profit more revenue more profit okay built in. so now let's pause here because um just, let's just stand back because right now this distillate now will have uh be, will be ready to sell okay if yeah. you're doing a bulk or there's a lot of different things you can do with it you can do isolate you can do separations if you need to get the thc out or you can go directly into into your product, product development, yep. yeah, into your CPG product development um, a formulations process. So if you just stand back now, look, look at this f- workflow here from the standpoint of, of a business value stream. Uh, what we have is we have a plant product now being refined into a, a product that actually can be sold right on the market, okay? Yep. And the value stream, uh, you know, what, what I recommend and what we uh, teach our customers to do is really um, map this out, okay, and map the information flow and also the material flow as it's going through this value stream. Yes. And when you do that, um, what what happens is you you have a current state that you're mapping out and you're saying, oh, well, this is not, you know, I don't think this is the way it should go, okay. A lot of that has to do with how you schedule uh, from a business standpoint, how do you create demand for distillate yes. in your manufacturing facility. Obviously, you want to do it with a sale, right? Absolutely. Okay. So um, what a lot of people do is, is they'll start making it. They won't have the sale. Yep. So you want, our, the, you want the customer to be pulling stuff from you. Go of get you, the customer. You, instead of you pushing it into the, into the processing, into the, yes. into, the, into the workflow. So what's very important is that you understand where to schedule your um, demand or your pull yes. and you want to have pull systems yes okay Always. so if you guys don't know what i'm talking about we have an operational excellence podcast we did on this you guys can talk look at it we go through a value stream map um you guys can call us we uh we do that kind of consulting as well so absolutely but it, it basically is lean principles so and you want to make sure that you're minimizing or controlling inventory in between at the oh, very at yep. the very beginning in between each of the processes you want to make sure that you have good understanding of what the cycle time is the machine time the mm-hmm. uptime uh, of each one of those processes so that you can get the cost accounting that you need to perform the to form the basis of your cost of goods sold okay so absolutely so if you have a client who is looking for you know, 10 kilos of isolate or, uh, you know, several kilos of full spectrum distillate, or maybe they want, you know, tea free, they're calling it tea free, it's THC non-detect distillate, which is broad spectrum distillate, right? And then how do you get there? So you want to find the customers who you're serving and make sure that you are, um, you're you're building you're making the the product that they want and are willing to pay you for right so figure out where you want to hang out that shingle do you want to just work on full spectrum distillate is that your sweet spot is isolate your sweet spot pick a sweet spot that you're serving that market know the market better than your customers do know your market better than your competitors do and you will always win right Right. So I think that uh, this is a great overview. Um, You know, I don't think it's necessary for us to go through the isolation separations and and actual products at this moment. But I think that, um, you know, we can we can do that down down. We can do that later, actually, I think. Yeah, I just know the only thing I will say again is you, you the big market, the saleable products are full spectrum distillate, which will be ready after clear still after the distillation process. So you can sell full spectrum distillate. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So yeah. big market for that. Putting it right in packaging. Full spectrum is referring to a um, couple different things, right? Within CBD world, full spectrum usually means it has 
uh, the, the, f the full spectrum of cannabinoids and it has the full spectrum of terpenes. terpenes okay. And it also has less than 0.3% THC Correct. in it. So that's the CBD world. In the THC world, um, of course, there's no specification on, uh, for example, the amount of THC in there. So mm -hmm. it's the full spectrum of cannabinoids and the full spectrum of terpenes. Right. Okay. And then it, to go to the separations, that's when you do a full THC remediation. And, you know, our Pure 99, for example, is optimized to remove the THC mm -hmm. uh, as much as possible. Right. And that gives you a broad spectrum, which still gives you the full terpene entourage. It gives you the full cannabinoid entourage. Um and optimizes for CBD, but it removes almost to a non-detect level the THC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the isolation side is the same way where you're basically, you have your CBD and your cannabinoids, okay, and, and right here, and then here you have your matrix, okay, and you're basically pulling those apart, you're throwing away the matrix, and so you just have your pure CBD there. Pure CBD. Now, yeah. one of the things that so you're that's finding what is. from a business perspective, um, I would say full spectrum and broad spectrum are your products that go into tinctures and other things that give you the fragrance and the flavor and the aroma of most of the entourage in the broad spectrum and the full entourage in the full spectrum. But in... Um, in lotions and lip balms and other things that don't have that um, requirement, requirement, yeah. uh, isolate is the way to go. And yeah. many of the larger big box, you know, pharma is moving toward isolate because they just want that pure CBD. Yeah. And a lot of people, if they want the, the full entourage effect, they can just use their terpenes that they collect up here yeah. and they put those in with the isolate oh. and they get that nice, uh, that nice flavor. Beautiful. Without the THC. And aroma, yeah. So, um, I, mean, I mean, the packaging side and then how you're formulating, this is a subject of a whole, oh, yeah. um, a whole process. Okay, so I, I guess I can go into it a little bit. I mean, formulations is basically the process of, of um, fixing the uh, concentration of your active, which would be CBD or THC or maybe a combination of those. Sure. Um, and then... Um, in the way you, and then also uh, engineering the experience along with, you know, to flavor, aroma, taste, uh, whether, you know, whether or not you have, uh, what kind of excipients you use. So this is what people talk about. Um, one popular um, excipient would be like a uh, medium chain triglyceride, for example. They take MCT oil and they stick it with uh, the CBD full spectrum distillate and then they create tinctures out of that. Oh. Okay. Um, even though tinctures are, are not usually thought of as oil, they do have, like, um, they're taken sublingually, and there is absorption sublingually um, sure. with, with that type of a formulation. So other formulations that people have heard about, nano formulations, for example, where they encapsulate uh, CBD or THC into, into a, a nanoparticle, or mm -hmm. they'll shear it down to a nanoparticle, or they'll put it into what they call a liposome. Mm -hmm. And those things are supposed to be a, you know, better bioavailable when it's uh, ingested into the gut. It's supposed to. Don't they do that gut. also if they're trying to put it in a liquid form because it's yes. not the, the none of these are water soluble. They're right. oil. Right. Right. So they're not water soluble. Right. So you have so, to nanosize and then encapsulate in some right, way. Right. Exactly. So you're, you're bringing them down, um, you know, supposedly below the wavelength of light. And so you're not be able to see them when they're in the, they're actually a particle there, uh, but they're, they're not be able to see them. So that's, that's the whole impetus to going down, you know, very, very small right. uh, in scale. So wavelength of light, light is what, three, three to 700 nanometers. So anything lower Absolutely. than that, you know, but you get it, you get this hazy, uh, you know, sometimes you'll get like a hazy, you know, um, type of, of liquid. So bong um, water. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically what you get. <laughs> anyway, so that's where you really also introduce, reintroduce your terpenes yep. for your full spectrum entourage effects. Yes. Um, and you can do vapes. You can do all this stuff. And this is really where the fun is. It uh, is. And we, we've done, oh, we, I basically, we've only done a couple podcasts on these. And we did the True. How to Make the, make the Best Things Forever. Which was a blast. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure I remember it all. Uh, we should, <laughs> yeah, that was where you had... <laughs> <laughs> we did we did a uh, RSO, which is a, 
um, a Rick Simpson oil, uh, which is a basically an extract of using. Um, I thought he said Homer absolute vodka Simpson. or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> No, we didn't use absolute vodka. What do we use? Everclear. Yeah, Everclear. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And then he drank the whole thing. So he was, it was. Uh, I don't remember much of that afternoon. Yeah, that was that was crazy. But and, and then the Delta Eight. When you tried the Delta Eight, I that did. was that was also. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was kind of loopy. So. Those are, yeah. So I don't plan a lot after these podcasts <laughs> because I never know what's coming at me. No, we're probably we should do a vape show. I think that would be kind of fun. Oh boy. Um, you know, where we can formulate some vapes and things like that. I think that'd be, that'd be I think time. that would be fun. Yeah. That, that would be fun. By the way, when we did that in the R and D lab, uh, somebody said that we were Cheech and Chong in lab coats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. It happens. It does happen. We, okay. This we is love where, this. This is fun. Okay. Now look on the packaging side. This yep. is really where the formulations in the packaging side is where your MRP and your ERP uh, your your materials resource planning modules that your accountants are going to want to know about. Actually, they're going to want to know about the whole thing. They and do. They're, they're going to want to know, okay, all the things that I was just talking to you, what are the standard labor costs? What are the standard, you know, um, material costs? Where does the information flow? Where is scheduling done in your facility so that you can have a pull system? Okay. Uh, and how does that interact with the accounting system? The accountants rule all, period. That's it. Yep. it. Because this is a manufacturing process. So um, anything that you do from a manufacturing execution standpoint, anything you do from a laboratory information standpoint, they need to know about traceability. Because that's, uh, that's basically the system of record for recalls. Um, the MRP ERP system is going to be basically executing that yes. the, on the recall side. So you'll have SOPs that form that really help with that. But all of your customer ledger that's in yeah that's in your mrp erp also how do you how do you for example monitor levels of packaging how do you do that yes. how do you monitor levels of excipients how do you know about expiration dates with all of your solvents and excipients and all that stuff that you're going to be using for your formulations and your packaging well guess what you have to have a good business system for that. And why does that make sense? Why why do you need to do that from a business perspective? Everything that Dr. John is talking about is good manufacturing practices. And if you can prove that you are GMP compliant, mm -hmm. good manufacturing practice compliant, and that little C that you see now is current because GMP is more of an iterative uh, right. you know, process. Um, so current, good manufacturing practices. If you're there and you can prove that with documentation and certification and show your processes and show that you have, how are you... Um, uh, doing recalls, what, what, what's out there, you have opened up a plethora of opportunity for yourself in terms of customer base. That's true. And that's, that's true. good business. And uh, it's also good business from the standpoint of you'll know where all your money is. Because well, uh, a lot of times too. you'll... You, <laughs> Yeah, I mean... But that, you get it caught up. I mean, you mentioned it earlier. You get it caught up in inventory that's parked here or here or here in the process, and you just don't even know it. The accountants know it, and that's why they're beating you about the face and arms, saying, why is all this right. stockpile here? Well, at some point in time, that if, if your goal is to really build something up and sell it off to somebody or to merge with somebody, you're going to have to have audited financials, essentially. Or uh, just to optimize your profit on an ongoing basis. Yeah, Right, but I mean, if you want to get sold or anything like that, you have to have audited financials. You do, period. Yeah. So if, if that means that you have to be able to put those financial systems in place, that means you have to know what your material workflow is, you have to know what your information flow is, and you have to be able to um, you know, articulate in the form of a, a, a income statement, a balance sheet, and a cash flow statement uh, what your business is. So um, usually people crawl, walk, run into that, yes. right? Yep. And so starting off with a small, uh, small startup, what would a crawl scenario look like in your mind for, for this process? For this process? Yeah. Uh, when you're saying about from, from the accounting perspective or from just the actual process? Maybe from just the business standpoint, what would okay. be the steps to go? You know, well, or, the first step is to find who, who is your customer going to be. That's, that's the absolute first thing. And we talked about that. When are you going to sell uh, bulk 
in uh, in terms of the product full spectrum distillate, broad spectrum distillate, isolate, what are you going to sell? Are you going to have your own packaging? Are you going to you know sell into vape? cartridges or are you going to do the other products potions and lotions kind of thing mm-hmm. you've got to you've got to know that and then have your customers lined up right once you get that you know where that pull is going to come from as dr john said earlier that's going to pull you and target you on where what you need uh, to do um and then it's a matter of getting you know set up getting it that's get, where divination takes place that's <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah, because there is a little bit of guesswork. Yes, I understand divination is. Um, but it's not a wild ass guess. It's an educated guess. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. So yeah, okay. So I'm, I'm an investor and you are trying to pitch me. Okay, go. Okay, go. You okay, go. I have customers who want um, isolate, right? How, how many customers have you talked to? I've talked to three times 10. Three times you t- you've talked to three, three times ten. Three times well, ten. and then the rule of two would be six. <laughs> right, isn't that what we talk about? Uh, but we do, and, yeah. you know. And then what 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 did they tell you? Exactly. What did they tell you was important? They what did you ask them? The, they wanted isolate, and they're because they're putting it in there. They don't want the taste or smell for the boomers. They want to put that in lotions and potions and get that out there. They right. want to put it in gel caps. So I I have all of I have these customers. This is what they want. Yep. So in order to get there, I need to be able to produce isolate. And here are the um, farmers that I've talked to who can right. get me the right CBD and right. CBG. And here are copies of their COAs and their licenses right. so that I have, you see that I've talked to them. And here's my process of going through that. Right. And I'm capturing terpenes at the decarb level, level uh, to additionally enhance my formulations down the road right. and to get my, um, and, and to be able to sell those if I wanted to uh, right. uh, ongoing. I have a limited, I've, I've chosen CO2 extraction because my operating costs are far less. Here is my pro forma and you can see that. And as a comparison, mm-hmm. here is the operating cost of an ethanol plant versus the CO2 that I've chosen, even though the capital equipment is much greater. This is why I'm doing it because there's a six to nine month crossover on operation and i can enjoy those profits for years to come that's what i want to do that's why i've chosen co2 versus ethanol bam bam and then i go into here's the de-waxing and filtration and boy we've got some byproduct of that that de-wax and oil that's there yeah there's By no the market way, for I, that right yeah, now well, that's not well i don't know what we're using well, that now we're using that in our did you see that stuff that we no made? oh yeah Oh, that's it's, awesome. Yeah, so we have, uh, we're using that as the wax portion to the creams. Oh, perfect. Yeah, and so we can certify it organic because it's, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, we do it's have all oh, the, it, it is beautiful Oh, that's stuff. awesome. That's yeah. new stuff. And actually, it looks, it looks really great. You know how typically you'd have a, anyway, so, yeah, oh, we, that, no. there is stuff. I mean, Squirrel. people have known for a very long time that they can use those waxes, okay? Yeah. But if you, a lot of times it's hard to get organic wax. So if you have an organic, you know, yeah. uh, ground material, uh, if you have an organic raw material stream, yeah. you can actually, at that point in time, you can get those waxes out. Spectacular. Yeah. Okay, so that's good. See, I didn't know that. Yeah. And now we've got it. So those are things that I would be telling an investor is saying, here is the market. It is a $6 billion market today, growing to a 23 or $27 billion market and, in the, in, within five years, depending on who you talk to and here are the three here's stansberry research right. here's all of these other people who are telling you what this market is so it's a growing market we're on the front end of that right i want you to be my partner in this are you in i'm in done all right <laughs> go we're gonna make money so but the more you know and more confidence you can convey about this whole process right if they know because you understand it boy that's huge it's really important that uh, you talk to your potential customers okay Always. and uh or at least get what you call what they call an avatar about that particular demographic okay so i'm going to talk uh i'm going to talk to i'm saying i'm going to sell and not to, the blue avatar with a tail yeah, i'm going to sell into europe okay and you know, then someone who knows something okay well how many europeans did you talk to uh okay well what are their requirements right and you what what would be really great is if you came back and said okay i talked to 15 customers, they all agreed to a 10-minute interview. 
I went through that interview. I basically asked them what their requirements were, what their needs were, and how I could possibly fulfill them if, I, if they were to be my customer. Yes. And you can do that as a process when you're starting it out. You can actually record it, ask them to get their permission. Um, you can get them all transcribed. And that then becomes the very basis of your pitch. Because, hey, here, our product here is responding to what they call the voice of the customer. And you're really able to uh, then curate your product saying, hey, look, here's, there's nascent demand here. It's a white space that other people are not addressing. This is the customer need as per the customers you have. Here's the customer segment, my product available segment that I have. In other words, if I'm going to make... Um, if I'm going to make like uh, an eye serums, for example, sure. or serums, you know, yep. so I would talk to people in a demographic that anti-aging creams. Okay, that's that's a that's a lot smaller than here. Here's the bigger. Here's the what, are, what are you saying um, about anti-aging creams? What <laughs> what are you saying? No, you look pretty good for your age. Hundred years old. <laughs> Okay, so Sorry, anyway. But yes, talk to the customers. Yeah, get, that, get that listed down. And know who your competitors are also. Because those competitors could, quite frankly, be your customers. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that. This is a big growing market. Right. And you know when you get an order that exceeds your capacity, those competitors are now, you are their customer because you're going to need their help. Right. And we do that. You know, much of what we do is for our family that comes in and buys our equipment. We do processing for them all day, every day, because they're either they've they've gotten a client who exceeded their capacity requirements and we backfill right. for them as part of the family. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're their contract manufacturer. It yeah, sometimes every it takes day. Them, yeah, it takes them nine to 10 months to get up and running because they either they have a building or they're getting a building going or whatever. So yeah. we can provide stop gap, that stop, stop gap, stop gap, stop gap <laughs> processing. Wow, I said it wrong yeah. twice. Did you drink any? Stop gap processing. No. <laughs> <laughs> you All sound right. like me. <laughs> I That's love right it. Here. So from, from this advanced bioprocessing work, workflow, this, we wanted to take this hemp business boot camp and really do a high level overview, but really lock in each element as a business solution and how you're going to make money or reduce cost. But how is it going to help your business and how is it going to help you increase and improve the likelihood of you getting funded? I mean, right. all of this, is, these are things that you need. And I appreciate all the questions. I know the team is going frantic on your questions, so I appreciate that. Um, keep them coming. They will be sitting here afterwards um, until we're done answering questions. And even then, if you've got a specific need or requirement, we do CBD jam sessions. Right. So we can sit down with you on your specific chat what are you hung up on? Where, where are you stuck in this process? What questions do you have? Um, and we, we have a lot of things that can help you uh, with funding, uh, with helping you get the, the right pitch deck, the right pro forma, the right calculators. All of that is online. And the white papers, that's the other thing that investors are looking for, are white papers that, su that support your assumptions. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's huge. Right. And, and again, that's getting those customers. So uh, we're, look, we're always here to help you make more money, to reduce cost, and improve efficiency. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here. We're part of the family. We so appreciate your questions. Uh, again, John always says, these go into um, more detailed FAQs. Yeah. Uh, and we, we do exhaustively explore all of your questions or yeah, a good I, answer. I would encourage you to, you know, download our, for those of you who want to go in deeper, uh, go and check out one of our guides. We have extraction guides. Uh, we have distillation guides. Go in and go ahead and take a look at that. Um, look at our calculator library. Calculator it's library is huge. A great place to go. And that's always expanding. And also, um, the mini courses that are coming are going to be, we're going to be drilling down into each element of this. We're going to be talking more. I'm going to be spending more time talking about the business cases that are out there and what's working and uh, specific uh, wins and losses so that we can post more of those. So you don't make those same mistakes that other people, that we and other people have made. Yeah. We get a lot of arrows in our backs. Yeah, and, yeah, we do. And that's why we want to share our experience with you so that you don't have that, uh, those issues uh, going forward. You're, you're always going to have issues. 
but mm. we're here to backstop that. I think you have a life subscription to them. I do. <laughs> of, of, I do. Of arrows in my back? No. <laughs> issues. <laughs> yeah, just issues. <laughs> I, have, I have a lifetime of issues and a, a, uh, a lifetime subscription. Yes, we all do. So we covered a whole bunch of stuff today, you know, and, you know, the HPLC testing, uh, which is, you know, the high performance liquid chromatography testing, which is potency testing. You're going to need that through this whole process. The IGW lab, the manufacturing execution system, including your, um, uh, the ERP and MRP systems that Dr. John was talking about earlier with your, for your accounting. I mean, all of those are in every step of this whole process yeah. and workflow. So you're going to need all of that. We've talked about wipe film, falling film. We've talked into the Fractron and the clear still. We've talked and about terpenes, terpenes thin extraction. film evaporation, falling film, vacuum filtration, winterization. And I'm excited that on the de-waxing uh, side of it, we can, we're using those, those waxes now. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, that is. That I is know really we've been working toward that for a while. Yeah, we have. And part of it is just, to, you know, the process itself to, to make them, refine them. But uh, they, they, they're so smooth. They are so smooth. So we're, this was predominantly geared toward hemp extraction, hemp terpenes, the hemp process. So this was the Hemp Business Boot Camp. I appreciate you being here. Again, the team is, is there. Thank you for being here. Um, and the favorite part of our show is those questions. So keep the team, Elijah and Q, they're, they're, and Lucas, they're all answering your questions behind the scenes. They're good. Uh, James and April are here for, moral, for our moral support and for, we drive them crazy, don't we? Oh, we do. <laughs> like, oh, don't say that. Oh, we have to cut that out. <laughs> no, no, we drive them crazy. I know we do. Uh, subscribe to our podcast, please, and share it. Uh, we are going to be moving these to... Um, some more truncated versions. So we're going to try to start to bring these down from an hour long to 30 minutes um, and uh, have them more as we, as we move into those mini courses so that they're more available to you uh, rather than a full, full hour. So I appreciate that. Subscribe to us. And by the way, we're now on Amazon music. Did you know that? Sweet. All right. Amazon music. Our podcast right. is there. So Very iTunes, cool. Google, uh, yeah. what are the other platforms that were on Spotify? Yeah, all kinds of yeah. different things. Um, subscribe Pandora. to our YouTube. We're on Pandora too. We're on Pandora. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's good. Look subscribe to our YouTube channel also, Calculator Library, all of our social channels. Again, thank you uh, and congratulations to David Floyd from Barstow, California. He took that hemp strain survey. Don't forget to fill that out. Um, go on there. I just really appreciate you. Uh, so in this in episode, we covered a ton Thank you. Well done. I love this whole process. All right. Well done. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Next week, I think we're doing top five success factors for CBD brand leaders. So brand. 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 All right. Let's brand leadership. All right. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Bye. Are you stuck in your hemp or cannabis business? Are you not reaching your processing goals? Here at Extract Lab, we offer a free 20-minute CBD jam session. A CBD Jam session is a conversation with an industry expert, not a sales call. A conversation where you can talk to us about whatever issues you are having right now and where you are stuck. We will help you uncover any issues you are currently having in your business, create a solution to fit your current scale, develop a future scale-up plan based on your needs, and help you make your processing goals a reality, all while getting your business plan back on track. Schedule your free 20-minute CBD Jam session at 1-651-600-0036. Again, that number is 1-651-600-0036.